Welcome to Live with Lisa, where we explore business insights and philanthropy with an emphasis on the Asian American community. I'm your host, Lisa Song Sutton. In this episode, I sit down with Maggie Hsu. She is Chief of Staff to Tony Shea and part of the executive team of Downtown Project. She is also an entrepreneur and co-founded Mochi Magazine, a publication that empowers young Asian American women. Check out behind the scenes and get more tips about business and community by following us on social media at Live with Lisa TV. My guest Maggie shares her advice and insights to our viewers. Check it out. Maggie, given all that you're involved in and all the different hats that you wear, how do you manage your time? There are only 24 hours in a day, so I think the big thing is to prioritize. And so for me, uh, I'm very guilty of this, I don't know if you are too, but I, I, I multitask a lot and I don't think that's actually the best way of managing my time and so lately I've been getting into a lot of mindfulness research around when you're in the moment, really being in the moment and allowing yourself to really focus on what's happening. Uh, so I'd say in order to do that, you just have to have your non-negotiables and so for me it's eight hours of sleep. If I get those eight hours, mm -hmm. I can be much more effective during my day and set those priorities. Given your educational background, you have such an impressive educational background, mm -hmm. How important do you think it is for someone to attend college, postgraduate school, and kind of follow that traditional path of education? Yeah, I mean, my parents were pretty much, you know, you're going to go to a great college, you're going to go to a great graduate school, but I don't know if that's something that anyone, you know, not everyone has to have that. And what's really important, for example, if you want to be an entrepreneur, it's almost more impactful from a learning perspective to go start a business and really test it out for yourself. Um, I do think what was great about business school was that you get to go inside all these different real life examples of what other business leaders faced. And so by the end of the two years, you've dealt with over you know, several hundred cases of this is what the situation was. How would I have approached it? And you heard from all your classmates about how they would have approached it. So I thought that was really fascinating. And it's a great network, a great time. What would your advice be to someone who is looking for an executive leadership position? I think the biggest thing is to really be humble and to listen to pretty much everyone in the company. And what's, you know, one of my favorite shows is Undercover Boss. And you have these leaders who go back into the workforce and they're really at the front lines. And I think in order to really run a business, you need to understand what the business is about. And so being in Las Vegas and, and you know being very close with the hospitality world, the idea of knowing what a front desk agent does, knowing what the concierge does, and really living that yourself retails very similar before you can then manage other folks. And you're also an entrepreneur, having created Mochi Magazine. What was the inspiration behind that? Yeah, so Mochi, um, back in high school, so back in 2004, my friend and I were getting ready for our senior prom. And at the time, we were looking through our Teen Vogue's and our Cosmo Girls and our Seventeens, but there really wasn't any Asian representation, not just in the editorial side, but really even in the advertisements. So you didn't really see a lot of Asians, and that's definitely changed now, um, but I remember we were saying, wouldn't it be amazing if there were a magazine that really catered to the young Asian American women and empowered them and, and really taught them how to make an impact in all sorts of aspects of life, and they didn't have to go into certain industries. So that was really the motivation behind Mochi, and the idea was it's a community of Asian American females supporting each other, and I think that's really important um, for us to support each other and help each other get ahead. So with Mochi, did you self-fund or did you bring in investors to start the magazine? So we actually self-funded, and what's great is it really allowed us to be scrappy. And so um, one of the so our first cover star was actually Brenda Song. And wow, at the time, yeah, yeah, so the sweet life of Zach and Cody, yep, mm -hmm. uh, the social network. And we reached out to her with no expectation. That was kind of our dream cover star, and she immediately said yes. And so for us, that was validation of the proof of concept, right? So this was a mm -hmm. something that the community really wanted. And so Brenda's people said, great, when's the photo shoot? And we kind of looked at each other and said, <laughs> oh no, we have to figure <laughs> out how to put together a photo shoot. And I right. think if we had had a lot of funding, we would have hired a great photographer and whatnot. Sure. But instead, we had to go out to all these photographers who we knew and we said, this is our mission, this is why it's so important, mm -hmm. would you help us? And so we got makeup artists to come for free, we got stylists, we had you know, clothing donated, and I think that ethos has carried on. And so when, when the gals at Mochi, and it's all volunteer, all nonprofit, when they come with an idea, instead of saying, you know, here you go, here's the funding, it's how can we do that in a scrappier way? And I think that's really been a great ethos of the magazine. Would you recommend self-funding or bringing in investors for a magazine endeavor? Yeah, I think the magazine 
business has definitely changed where you know before a lot of the print magazines have had to fold because they haven't gotten enough advertising or subscriptions i do think self-funding is ideal in the sense of you can really control the voice and the vision and, and obviously an investor is not going to influence the editorial side of the magazine but at the end of the day if you can self-fund if you can sustain that yourself it's a really great way to grow a business and who are your personal mentors there's so many and i think what's amazing just being in, in the community here. Everyone's really willing to help out. Um, a mentor who's been just amazing uh, to work with with me is one of the former general counsels of Zappos. And so she's an Asian American woman as well. And, you know, married, has, has a son, and has really found this amazing way of balancing this really successful professional career with spending a lot of time with her family. And I think that's been a great source of inspiration for me. So what is the one thing that all young entrepreneurs should be doing right now? I think there's a perception if you have a great idea, you want to keep it close to, you know, close to you and, and make ask people to sign NDAs. And what I found is that the more you share your idea with people out there, and the more you talk about it and, and really get people excited about it, the more energy and, and the more you know traction it gets versus saying this is my idea and I'm not gonna tell you about it. And so my big piece of advice would be to really be open and collaborative and talk about that idea and get actual feedback from potential customers because you'll need to refine it, right? It's your idea, but it's really the customers that'll help it grow. Thank you, Maggie. Yeah. Asian interest. You don't see many Asian people in magazines, especially in like mainstream magazines like uh, Glamour, or Cosmo, or Seventeen or anything like that. Um, well, I really love the fashion and the blogging from other teens just like me. I mean, I mean, it's really cool to see like insight from other teens and what they think. The definitely fashion interests me because I want to be a fashion stylist and I go to FIT, so naturally fashion would interest me. Oh, I think the whole um, part about how it influences teenagers and Asian teenagers because there's no like magazine out there in the publication business that's directed towards Asian American teenagers. Absolutely. I grew up in New Hampshire, which isn't exactly um, have a large Asian community, so definitely it would have helped me build confidence and you know make up and dress um, when I was growing up? Well, all throughout childhood, I've never really experienced anything Asian American until now. So for this whole company to be growing like this, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a new generation of like new people coming out and it's gonna be amazing. I actually think so. I think it's good to be reminded of where Asian Americans are in the industry, whether in media or in politics or sort of how they're making a difference so that you can also think that you're making a difference in some way. And there are so many, I can't think of any. Well, I think Josie, who's the creative director of Al, he's definitely an inspiration because He's worked so hard and he's come so far and he's doing amazing things now, so he's definitely an inspiration. I know most people would look like towards a celebrity or something, but I really don't have one. I sort of think like my mom, who's Asian American, is like my biggest role model because, you know, she has, she cares a lot and she helps everyone out and like being an Asian American is kind of like 
a title, and I think it's like it's a really proud title for me to have. I think. So I work this summer at Bristol Myers Squibb, which is a pharma company, and our general counsel for Bristol Myers Squibb is Asian American. Her name is Sandy, and she's Sandy Leong, and she's incredible. And she was actually one of the pioneers of Asian American sort of legal forces in the industry. And I think that she's a great, great example. Thank you, Maggie, for your great insights and business tips. Maggie is also very involved in the community, and we had the pleasure of serving as judges together for the Miss Asian Las Vegas pageant. Coming up next, we have a great segment planned for you, so don't go anywhere. When was the last time you truly competed? When was the last time you fought valiantly for what was rightfully yours? When was the last time you rewrote history? In the United States and around the world, we are Ultra Brand, and we build the world's most innovative and aggressive brands. Welcome to Synergy Sotheby's International Realty. Our purpose is to artfully unite extraordinary properties with extraordinary lives. We are committed to helping our clients purchase or sell with unparalleled service from start to finish. With nearly 700 offices worldwide, including two in Las Vegas and Henderson, we provide access to luxury homes, investment properties, and more. Synergy Sotheby's International Realty. Contact us at mohicamedia.com. To learn more business tips and see behind the scenes photos, find our social media at Live with Lisa TV. Stay tuned for our upcoming segment. Earlier this month, Dunkin' Donuts held their third annual Dunkin' Donuts Celebrity Restaurant Challenge. They asked local celebrities, dignitaries, and media personalities to serve as employees at a designated Dunkin' Donuts location to raise funds and awareness for Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation's Camp Cartwheel. During the two-hour period, Dunkin' Donuts donated all proceeds raised during the challenge to the Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation. Dunkin' Donuts utilized its 15 locations in Las Vegas, North Las Vegas, and Henderson to participate for this great cause. To find out more information about Camp Cartwheel and the Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation, head over to nvccf.org. Thank you so much to everyone for coming out and joining us today for the Duncan Challenge. All the money went back to the Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation, and we were slammed here at the drive-thru and in the star. So thank you so much for all of your support, and we'll see you next year. the resort lifestyle. Visit us at liquidandlace.com. Welcome to Sin City Cupcakes, Las Vegas' number one alcohol-infused cupcake company. With over 40 decadent flavors, all of our product is baked fresh and made to order. We offer free delivery by the dozen across the Las Vegas Valley. We specialize in making your event or occasion fabulous. Call us at 702 776-0955 or place your order online today at SimCityCupcakes.com Welcome to BrandBridge.org We connect quality brands with passionate influencers. Brands who want to grow need to be talked about and it isn't enough to just have a company social media account. BrandBridge is a community with a vast network of influencers that can help your brand connect with millions of new customers in a meaningful way. You need trusted curated influencers on your side that you can grow a true partnership with over time. We deliver substantial increases in engagement and awareness, along with rich analytics to track your social growth. 
Visit our website at brandbridge.org and download our app today. Stay tuned for our business segment brought to you by Sam Deaver and The Social Media Show. Good morning, Sin City, and welcome to another episode of the Social Media Show. I'm your host, Sam Dever, here with Justin McVeigh. Justin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And Justin, uh, tell us a little bit about what you do. So um, we run a really exciting and brand new program here at the university, um, the UNLV Business Startup Center, uh, really to be an on-campus and off-campus community resource for entrepreneurs and startups who need a little bit of assistance, or in some cases a lot of assistance, uh, in, in the biz- on the business side of their startup. Uh, so we're here as a resource, and most notably a free resource, uh, to help them get uh, a little bit further down the path to, to forming their business or to becoming a successful business. Now, who, who started it? Like, who was the initial person that had the idea to start this program? Sure. So there's been a resource on campus for many years, part of the Small Business Development Center. It's a large program nationwide that's funded by the SBA. Um, we recently just decided to kind of tweak the program and shift more into the the you know startup community. Um, we're still a resource for anyone, small business or otherwise, but we really thought with the resources that we have and the limited folks that we have on staff that we could really focus on particularly startups. And when I say startup, I mean the more innovation-based mostly in the technology space, but really can be in any space, um, but more innovation-based and have those startups have the ability to scale and grow quickly. Uh, And in turn with that, they uh, hire folks. So it's a a job creation motivation as well. Um, So it was a university uh, kind of thought to shift from being a traditional small business development center uh, and focusing our efforts a little bit more strategically on this community and what we saw was growing in this community. And that was the more entrepreneurial uh, startup based, or excuse me, innovation based startup community. And, and you mentioned that, and it seems that's the first thought that goes in my head. What you guys are doing seems to go with what's going on in the uh, the entrepreneurship here in the city with downtown. And I actually met you at the Innovation Center yes. at Startup Weekend. Yep. So it definitely, you guys are catering to what's going around here in the yeah, community. Yeah, we, at, you know, the university is both geographically and, and in our center's perspective, um, kind of philosophically right in the middle of the city between those two worlds that you just mentioned, the, 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 the thriving downtown entrepreneur and, and startup community, and then those that are growing in the Innovation Center over right. in the Southwest. So we're centrally located between those two, and we think kind of philosophically we're able to bridge the gap between those two as well. Um, I, you know, We don't have coders. We're not writing apps. We're not writing, uh, writing technology. What we're there to do is to assist those that t- typically know the technology that they're working in, uh, but may not um, fully understand or uh, or be able to build the business side of it. Uh, and we're there to both, you know, kind of educate them on what the needs of that are and, and hopefully get them a little bit longer down the path, uh, uh, further down the path, excuse me. So like I said, we're, um, we're a free resource. Um, so we feel like that in and of itself is a capability because it will allow the startups to not spend money on consultants that maybe would be doing the same thing that we do. Uh, so that in turn gives them a little bit longer runway. Uh, if they don't have to spend three, five, ten thousand $10,000 on someone to help them put together a strategic strategic plan or ha- help them forecast financials, uh, something like that, then that three, five, or $10,000 is going to be uh, much more useful for them when they're actually developing their technology, doing market research, or trying to uh, uh, trying to get their brand recognized out in the community. So that's where we think that those resources that would typically be spent on a service like ours uh, can be better spent on actually growing their business. Okay, you know, and that's a you hit it on the head. That's a fun, phenomenal resource for anyone, especially when you're getting started. Yeah, absolutely. You know, instead of spending what you just said with a consultant or whatever, you can use that more toward marketing or whatever it may. Getting your business actually set up as an entity. Yeah. Um, but you guys are there for free. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and we tell you know people that our kind of sweet spot is from napkin to execution. I love that. You know, yeah. so if you literally just have an idea, maybe you've participated in a startup weekend and it's uh, it's Monday, um, <laughs> come see yeah. us. You know, because we we are both an on campus and an off campus resource uh, for entrepreneurs and startups who have a really great idea uh, and really want to know where they can go from from there. Um, we also, you know, are doing. We'll be start doing a lot of outreach to the um, undergraduate and graduate community on campus. Um, there really, other than the SBDC, which is our predecessor, there has never really been a resource uh, for applying the knowledge that students are learning on campus and applying that into creating a, a company, really building the blocks for uh, for, a, for a startup. And that could be anything from how to get a business license all the way through, like I mentioned before, market research or whatnot. So uh, the fact that we're on campus and that's where we're headquarters, we're going to be doing a lot of outreach to students to let them know that we are here, that we're here to help. And hopefully that will grow the kind of entrepreneur spirit that will grow the, the, the startups that are coming out of the, the campus as well uh, by, by us, you know, giving them a leg up and, and um, not having to spend money where it's um, probably unnecessary where we can help. Uh, anything like that that we think we can we can be a resource, we, we want to be. Um, so, you know, m- my kind of drumbeat is, you know, come see us because we're here for free and we're, we think we can help. And that leads me into my next question. If I am a student here at UNLV and I want to get, and I think you pretty much just hit it on the head, but if I a student wants to get involved in what you guys are doing to help some of these businesses you guys are helping. Because I know with talks with you in the past, if this program would have been at my college, I would have been signed me up, right. <laughs> you know, because you get to that junior, senior year, you know, you're not really thinking. But you get to that last semester, senior year, oh, crap, I got to go start applying for jobs. Right. Or, you know, it's, reality starts hitting in where, you know, p- these students can have a chance to get involved in some of these startups and become on the ground floor with them. Yeah, so absolutely. So if, if they want to get involved with what you guys do, what's the best way for the, a student here at UNLV to reach you guys? Sure. Well, there, there's a couple of ways to get involved. Uh, one, certainly by, uh, like you just mentioned, uh, being involved with our center. Uh, we, we're looking for interns. We, we need volunteers to help work with the startup. Uh, community. But also if you have a startup and, and you want to actually get our assistance, both of those ways, you know, w- will take interest from both sides of that. Um, and really just come find us. We, you can find us at, at, uh, at UNLV Startup on Twitter. Uh, we, we just got our space, our kind of uh, uh, space that we're going to be uh, using on campus, and we're right on the first floor of the student union now, Very nice. Um, Very nice. right by the food court. Um, so come in, check us out there, and, and you can also find us online at, at uh, unlv.edu slash startup. Um, those, you know, really come – Walk in, check us out, and then let us know that you're interested or maybe that you need some assistance and, and we're here uh, to help. Um, it's, it's, um, it's really interesting, the, the, uh, the need that we've seen just in the three months or so that we've been in existence, and I think that's really important. So we're working towards getting the word out more and more uh, that we are here, that we are a resource, and we think that that'll only uh, grow our kind of uh, client list, if you will, those folks that we're working with. We've had a tremendous uh, outpouring of community and campus support since we've started, uh, both from those wanting to be involved as well as uh startups that need assistance. And you guys are already working with several businesses, I understand, right? Yeah, now. we have probably 40 to 50 wow. uh, on our client list just in the first three months that we've been in existence. That's awesome. So uh, that really shows the need, I think, in the community and the fact that we're free, you know. Um, one thing to be, you know, probably said is all of the, not necessarily all of the clients that come to us and say, we need help, can we help? You know, we're not attorneys, we're not CPAs. Uh, but the good thing in a lot of what we do uh, is we can broker connections with with those in the community that may be able to help. There are other resources in town that are also free uh, that you know startups may not be aware of. And uh, if we can't help, we'll help you find someone that can. Uh, so come see us. We'd love to have the opportunity to at least chat with you, learn about what your what your startup is, and, and if we can help or if we can connect you to someone who can. I think what you guys are doing here in Vegas, <clears throat> other cities and campuses should take notice. I think it's really going to set the mold, if you will, of the future of entrepreneurship. And because I know you and I have talked too, you know, the classroom's great. Right. 
but you can't replace that real world experience because that's when you really learn. That's when you really sure. Enjoy. We think there's something to be said about both the academic and the applied side of learning entrepreneur Absolutely. entrepreneurism. And so um, we've got some great programs at UNLV that are teaching entrepreneurism and and teaching you how to go about you know building your startup and and being uh, being a business leader um, and all of the nuts and bolts that you need to learn from an academic standpoint to do that. Uh, we think that we are kind of the next step. If, if you build a really great, interesting concept in your in your academic setting, come see us then, and we can actually help you turn it into a real business. We think that UNLV should be creating um, highly skilled employees, but also very um, very highly skilled employers as well. Absolutely, it's all about the mix, the balance. Sure. Well, that's awesome, Justin, and uh, thank you so much for coming on. Any last shout outs? Sure. As I mentioned before, they can find us uh, at UNLV Startup on Twitter. Uh, uh, UNLV.edu slash startup is our website, which has all of my contact information as well as our other team members' contact information. My email is justin.mcveigh at UNLV.edu. Uh, so you can certainly reach out to me there. Um, I think a couple of shout outs I'll, I'll be able to give is, you know, we can't do what we do on a regular basis and ca- uh, wouldn't have been as successful without uh, a large list of partners that have jumped on board and been willing to assist us. A couple that you know you mentioned, the Innovation Center has uh, given us a, an office to operate out of there. The Fifth Street School has given us an office to operate out of there. Oh. And the Henderson Economic Development Office has given us an awesome. office to operate out of. So that really lets us reach out into the community. Uh, and then others like uh, Adam Kramer at the Chamber of Commerce, Adam. he's their director of entrepreneurism. Um, they've been instrumental in helping us connect with business leaders in the community uh, so that we can um, then be a broker for for the startups we're working with. So if you need a talent that um, that a business or a business leader may have in the community, we have the resources to reach into kind of the membership of the chamber and working with Adam and his team uh, to be able to connect those to the startup community. So we've had great outpouring of support and, and those um, associations like the chamber and, and others have been really instrumental in our success so far and we know that it'll only get, uh, get better as we move forward. Very supportive community, it sounds yes. like. Awesome. Yes. Well, Justin, thank you so much. My pleasure. Sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's Look my forward pleasure. to seeing you guys grow this next uh, upcoming semester. We're absolutely ready to, so come see us. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you to all my guests who joined me this week. If you have questions relating to business or entrepreneurship, submit them via social media at Live with Lisa TV or through our website at livewithlisa.tv and I'll answer them right here on the show. I will leave you with a quote from Yoshikazu Tanaka, founder of Gree. The number one piece of advice I can give is for you to just start it. Have a positive week. Oh, yeah, good job, bro. You're kind of drooling on the side there too, man. <laughs> Whoa, brain freeze. Just don't Joanne understand. just What's... made me a shift leader. She's a shift leader because she didn't take three union breaks in the last four <laughs> minutes and drink on the floor. We are here to raise money for the Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation. Come by and see us. <laughs> We're making the Popo special donut. P.D. <laughs> and it don't say for P. Diddy. <laughs>